In the last video, I showed the computation of seasonal indices, which help delineate the effects of seasonality in the time series data. Now, however, I pointed out that accounting for seasonality alone in the forecast would be insufficient since, additionally, we have a known trend, as you can see, in the time series. So to account for the effects of both seasonality and trend in the time series, we begin by deseasonalizing the data. And we do so by dividing the original series, YT, by the seasonal index. So let's do that right here. And we can do that for all the periods, regardless of whether our moving averages appear in those periods. So equal, we click on this value of YT and we divide by the corresponding value of, of the seasonal index right there. And then there we go ahead and copy down all the way there to the last observation in the regular season. Now, as you might have guessed, this seasonalized series removes the effect of seasonality from the original series, hence the term deseasonalized data. And I know you're saying, if we work so hard to smooth the data and reintroduce seasonality in the seasonal index as a way to improve forecast accuracy, why do we deseasonalize the series? The answer is because we want to be able to identify the long-term trend. Or we want to be able to isolate the long-term components and include it in the forecast ultimately. For example, say you were interested to learn where sales are headed by and large, as opposed to simply what sales would be in the, ne in the next quarter. Right there. You know, then as you can uh, see, it'd be helpful to remove not only the irregular component from the time series, but also the seasonal component from, from the data. That way you can see clearly what the uh, trend effect is. Otherwise, uh, you'd be limited to making just one period ahead forecast using the moving average as I showed earlier. All right, but no worries will still be accounting for seasonality in the ultimate forecast that we're going to make. All right, so going back up here to find trend, what we're going to do is to run a simple linear regression of the season of the of the deseasonalized series against time. All right, and here's the regression equation right here, where y star is the deseasonalized series. So this is going to be our dependent variable and time, which is this over here, um, this uh, uh, variable that indicates the number of periods altogether that we have in the um, data set will represent the independent variable. So let's go ahead and uh, do that. So we go to data, we go to data analysis, we choose regression. And let me go ahead and delete what I did earlier so as not to confuse you. All right, all of that. So click back over here. All right, where it says input Y range, click on the word on the cell containing the word deseasonalized and work your way down to the very last observation right there. And then click here for input X range and click on the cell containing the word time and work your way down over here, right there, the very last observation. And check labels since we started highlighting from the cells containing the um, text. And then click here for output and then click here real quick. While cursor is blinking right there, choose a spot on the spreadsheet like so. And then don't worry about all these guys out here. Just click there and OK. And now this is the big deal that we want, the parameter estimates right there. That's the main thing that we seek, the y-intercept parameter estimate and the coefficient. And a couple of things, if I were to make this output look good, format the output so you can see clearly what, what we're doing here you find, let's go like this, all right, 
um, hang on a second all right let's do it like that so you find that this regression is statistically significant since p-value is less than five percent also as you can see more than 98 percent of the variation in um, in the uh, series is explained by the uh, variation in time all right so anyhow so using the values of the y-intercept and the slope we're going to calculate the trend component, which is actually the, esti uh, the estimated regression equation. So sitting out here, all right, let me bring this up just a little bit. All right, so we're going to be using these values, considering this regression equation right here. So it's going to be equal, we click on the intercept, which is this, and then we're going to hit plus, open parenthesis, we click on the slope and then we multiply it by the value for time and then we close parenthesis right and that's the first estimate right there and all we have to do is while clicking over it the intercept we uh, make it permanent we fix it and the slope we also fix it that way we can just simply copy all the way down now let's not get ahead of ourselves right there okay so this is what we have here all right this is the train component and what we now want to do with the train components in place we're now ready to carry out a forecast that will include both the uh, seasonal component as well as the train component to do so we combine the two um, columns by all the two components by multiplying them so we sit here all right the forecast is going to be equal to the seasonal index the first value being 0.86 multiplied by the trend value of 2286 enter and this multiplication is in keeping with the fact that we're assuming the more widely applied multiplicative time series model all right in this data set uh, we do not have the cyclical component and we have already smoothed out the residual comp component so we have only the trend component and the seasonal component and so we go ahead and copy it down copy down copy down there you go so these represent the forecast values for our time series variable sales. For example, in the first quarter of year one, actual value is 1959, but the forecast value is 1971. In the first, in the second quarter of year two, actual value 2958, forecast value is 2921. And actually, we can go ahead and plot this so we can observe how well the um, forecast tracks the actual value. So let me see if I can do that with this existing graph, which I should be able to. So I'm going to right click on this and let's see, I'm going to click on select data and then I'm going to click here add. and series name as you can see is forecast and then for the series values let's get rid of that while cursor is clicking blinking here click on this first observation and work your way down to the very last and OK and OK and if I go back here you can see the beauty that's unfolding right here you can see how it is that notice the original value is original series is blue and the forecast series is uh, red and see how the red series nicely superimposes on the blue series telling us that we have very well done a good job here in accounting not just for seasonality but also trend so with this 
um, we should be able to go ahead and calculate our out of sample forecasts because all of these are in sample forecasts because they are forecasts that are made within the period in which we already have the original series. Our out of sample period is going to be year 7 and what we're going to do is to extend the time as I have to any number of periods, say four quarters as I've done, which is one year. It's not a very good idea to pro project too far out since unknown cyclical variations may interfere with your long-term forecasts. So with this, all we're going to have to do is to go ahead and continue with the forecast by multiplying the um, seasonal index by the trend. So for the seasonal index, I've extended it into the forecast period because it's going to be the same index for each of the respective quarters. And um, the trend calculation is also going to be the same because we're assuming that the parameters are going to be the same. So we just simply extend it down. And all we need to do is equal multiply this by the corresponding trend components and there you have it. These are the out of sample forecasts. So and if you want to represent this in um, the um, chart we can do that too. So let's see if we can do it. Alright, let's I'm going to just click on this and let's just bring this guy down here and and you can see right here so um, I'll say that the forecast data very closely tracks the original series in the in sample period and I dare say therefore that based on this encouraging evidence from the in sample period we can have confidence that our out of sample forecasts are on points and this wraps up this presentation thank you for your time